In the last video, we talked about the syntax for basic error handling. And we also talked about how this setup is really a bad practice and not what we'd want to do. This is the start of what we'd want to do for handling errors, but it's not where we want to end. And so that's what I want to talk about today. So the main issue and why you wouldn't want to do this is there's not a lot of detail and no matter what happens our application is getting rescued there's a lot of times where this would be a bad idea because you may be putting bad data in the database you might be doing a lot of things that are really bad for your application as a whole and sometimes you'll be putting a rescue block in and not realizing the repercussions of it so uh, a much better way to do it instead of using this kind of broad stroke where we're rescuing every single error is rescuing specific errors. So say you have a type of application where you want to actually allow this to proceed and you simply want to log it out and know that it happened. So the way to do that is I'm first going to come back here and run this. So we're going to see that it rescued the air. So that's working on a broad stroke level. But let me come here and I'm going to knock all this out temporarily. Run it again. And so it shows us right here what the air is. So we have zero division air. And so I'm going to put our begin and rescue block in but this time i'm going to say what kind of error that i want to rescue i want to rescue this zero division error and if i pass a hash rocket to it and send uh, store it in the e variable this is kind of like you can think of it like an iterator variable except in this case it's going to store the error inside of it and what this is going to let me do is I can write puts uh, and say error occurred and then I can treat this like a regular variable so the zero division error has a description associated with it and that's stored now in the E variable and I can print it out to the console so now if I come back here and run it again it says error occurred divided by zero so it gives some description to it so if you're printing this out in a log like the thing we're going to be doing here uh, shortly uh, then you're going to be able to have descriptions you're not just going to have a bunch of errors all over the place so this is uh, typically what you want to do so why is this better the reason is because now we actually have a detailed knowledge on what's occurring. So let's throw something else out here. So we know that eight divided by zero is gonna get caught and it's gonna give us an error message. Now what happens if I do nil plus anything, nil plus 10. Run this and you can see right here, now it gives us an error. And in this case, it gives us a no method error, which is exactly what it should be doing because we're passing nil to this uh, plus operator or this plus method, and this is throwing an error. Even though we have a rescue block in there, it's not gonna catch it because the only thing that we're rescuing is the zero division error. Now, if we wanted to capture everything, I could do standard error right here, come back, print it out, and now you can see that we have much prettier kind of output. It's no longer giving us the error message. Now it's saying error occurred, undefined method for nil class. So the one, a really big takeaway with this though is this is not the way to fix errors in your application. This is more of the way to get proper reporting on your errors. If you have errors in your application or you let errors occur due to poor data validation or anything like that, those items need to be fixed in this portion. 
it needs to be fixed in that part of the application that runs. The rescue block is a way to make sure that one, you can get reporting on what's occurring in your application and the errors that are occurring, or you want to log them, uh, or you don't want to have a ugly output in case an error does occur. Uh, you'd rather have something that's more descriptive and uh, a lot better to look at. So that's a better way to handle errors and also a way of being able to rescue specific ones if you want to just pick and choose different errors that you want to rescue.